Okay, right up front, let me get this out the way. No, I'm not anti-AMD or anything like that. I'm still planning to buy a 7900 XTX. I'm still looking forward to getting my hands on the card and making a whole lot of content around it. And overall, I'm still hoping AMD does really well this generation. And so with all of that being said, just like with Nvidia in the past, I have to be objective and I have to call certain things out here. Overall, again, I'm really excited for AMD's upcoming cards, but where is the information? We are now officially less than two weeks out from the 7900 XT and XTX launch. And while I'm excited for those cards, we know very little about those cards. You might be saying, well, what do you mean? We know, we know plenty. We know the price. We know the release date. Okay, cool. But there's a lot of information we don't know. Okay, first of all, let's talk about performance. You might be saying, what do you mean performance? We know the 7900 XTX will be 1.5 times and 1.7 times faster than the 6950 XT. But we all know what I'm talking about here. Initially, AMD made the claim that the 7900 XTX will be in direct competition with the RTX 4080. But the reason why they did not compare to the 4080 is simply because the 4080 was not yet on the market at the time of their announcement. That's fair. How can you be expected to compare to something that's not on the market yet? Fine. However, the RTX 4080 has now been on the market for about two or three weeks, and yet we still have no official benchmarks from AMD showing us how much better the 7900 XTX is when compared to the 4080. Yes, the 4080 will technically have better ray tracing, we already knew that, but in terms of rasterization, the 7900 XTX is supposed to be faster by everything we, we have been told so far. It is supposed to be faster than the RTX 4080, yet the 4080 has been on the market for weeks and we have no official head-to-head -head benchmarks at all whatsoever. And I find this just a little bit concerning. Now, I understand the counter argument. Well, that's what the embargo is for. That's what the reviews are for. You have to wait for the YouTubers to get their hands on the cards, review the cards, the embargo will lift and we'll have all these videos. Yeah, I understand that, but think about this logically. AMD was incredibly bold and confident with their presentation and how well they were going to dominate this generation. And I hope that's true. I want that to be true. However, it only benefits AMD even before launch, weeks before launch, if they have information about how their 7900 XTX compares to the RTX 4080, it only benefits AMD to tell that to the market and say, hey everyone, this is how much better we are. Hey everyone, here's how we look and we're $200 cheaper MSRP. That, that only benefits their position. So why the lack of information? And to be clear, I'm not taking shots here. I'm literally saying I'm a little bit concerned about some of this stuff because the lack of information at this point really kind of has me scratching my head and saying, where, where's this information? Now I'm making this video because I'm hoping one of you see this video and can have a civil conversation with me in the comment section and say, hey, actually we, we do have this information. We have a chart. I found it here. Here's the link. I would really appreciate that because I have scoured the internet. I have been on Twitter every single day. I have gone to videocars.com every single day, multiple times a day, and we, we don't have this information. Moving on to the next subject, pricing. There's a lot of information there we don't have. Yes, we know the MSRP of the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX, $900 and $1,000. However, what we don't know is any of the pricing related to AIBs. Now, for those of you who may not be aware, AIB cards are typically more expensive than reference models or founders models. And the reason why is because the companies that work with Nvidia and AMD directly have to raise their costs in order to make their fair share of profit because AMD and Nvidia typically take the majority of profits because they own the design of the PCB. And to me, that makes sense. I get it. Plus, not to mention AIB cards typically have better coolers, bigger coolers and all of that stuff. And so there is some extra costs associated with that. So typically speaking, AIB cards are more expensive than the reference model cards. And that's fine. But how much more expensive are we talking? We have seen multiple confirmations, announcements and leaks of various cards now. We know about the Power Color Hellhelm. We know about the Power Color Red Devil. We know about the Gigabyte model. Well, technically there's multiple Gigabyte models. Models. We know about the ASUS Tough models, and just today we found out there will be a Sapphire reference model, and because it's based on the reference design, will that also have the reference MSRP of 999, or will it be a little bit higher? We don't know. All of these AIBs keep confirming their cards will be a thing, but we don't know the pricing of the cards. Furthermore, we don't know the clock speeds of the cards. 
Where is that information? We know the reference model will be able to boost up to 2.5 gigahertz, and that's great, but one of the main benefits of going with an AIB card is to have that extra power connector. You get more power for the card so that the card can perform better. The card can clock higher. So where are those clock speeds? Early rumors suggested that RDNA 3 would be able to scale up to 3 gigahertz. And now the latest rumors are suggesting that RDNA 3 is actually unstable at 3 gigahertz and, and it can't clock that high after all. Now let me be perfectly clear here. Personally, I don't care too much how high the cards can clock. If it's 2.5, 2.7, 2.8, it's all going to be a nice upgrade for me. But look, I would like to have the information so that I can make a better decision on which card I want to buy. Do I want to buy a reference model? Do I want to buy an AIB card with a different design? I don't know because there's so much information I don't have. And we're less than two weeks away from the launch where is the information? What's going on here? The one thing I wanna make abundantly clear is that I'm not taking shots at AMD. I like AMD. I'm looking forward to these cards. I'm excited to get these cards. But at the end of the day, the lack of clarification, the lack of information, this close to launch is a little bit worrying for me. Are things not going as planned behind the scenes? Is something wrong? Is there something we should know? What? Why is there a lack of information? And maybe I'm way off base and I'm sure, I'm sure you're gonna let me know in the comment section down below. Additionally, I've gone back and I've looked at the AMD presentation for the 7900 XT and XTX and Something that stood out to me that I, I didn't really pick up on initially was that what they said was the fastest gaming card under $1,000. Well, first of all, it's only under $1,000 by one penny. And secondly, the direct competition is above $1,000. The direct competition is the 4080 at $1,200. So it's making me wonder, okay, well, even though AMD has alluded to the fact that they will be faster than the 4080, they're still protecting themselves on the back end by saying, well, no, we, we said we would be the fastest card under $1,000. Again, I, I got high hopes here, but, but I'm starting to worry a little bit. So I'm hoping some of you can ease my concern down below in the comment section. Now, look, I got one more piece of information I wanna share with you. And honestly, this is more of a, of a theory on my part, but I don't really see anybody talking about this too much. I've seen a few people complain, but l let me tell you about it. Okay, so you have the 7900 XT for $900 or 899, and you have the 7900 XTX for $100 more at 999 or $1000. And a lot of people are saying, "Why why are these cards so close together in terms of price and naming convention? Why not just make the 7900 XTX the 7900 XT and make the 7900 XT the 7800 XT? Like what's going on here? Where's the lower range cards? Why are they so close in price? What's going on? I have a theory. If you remember Nvidia initially made the announcement that there will be two 4080 models, the 12 gigabyte model and the 16 gigabyte model. And the 12 gigabyte model was priced at $900 hundred dollars and the 16 gigabyte model was priced at twelve hundred dollars and as you know the 16 gigabyte model it came it, it's here it's not selling well it's overpriced i did a full video about that and it is here and it's it's a twelve hundred dollar card and so now both amd models are cheaper than that and if one of those models can outperform it in terms of rasterization that's going to be a win for amd but let's take a step back initially there were supposed to be two 4080 models. And AMD did confirm that the 4080 is the direct competition to the 7900 series cards. So I think initially the 7900 XT at $900 was meant to go head to head with a 4080 12 gigabyte model. And the 7900 XTX at $1,000 was meant to go head to head with a 4080 16 gigabyte model. But then Nvidia unlaunched or canceled the 4080 12 gigabyte model, now making their a void in the market. But I think AMD was initially setting up their lineup to go head to head with Nvidia in that direction. And once Nvidia changed that direction, AMD just said, well, you know what? It's not really hurting us to keep it this way. So we'll just leave it. And if it doesn't sell well, we'll do a price cut after launch or something like that. Now, again, that is just my opinion. I don't have any kind of insider information or anything like that, but I haven't really seen too many people talk about why these cards are so close together in terms of pricing and naming convention and, and all of that stuff. I've seen a lot of people complain about it and say the 7900 XT should be cheaper and name differently, but no one is really talking about why AMD did it that way. And so that's my thought theory and I'm curious to know yours down in the comment section down below. That's all I got. Thank you for checking out the video. If you liked it, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed and until next time, E-Rock out.